welcome to this video in which we're going to introduce you to this wonderful two-door Morris Minor saloon in lovely green. This car we've sourced and helped purchase for the customer uh, and it's going to get converted later on in the year once we get through the cars we've actually got in the workshop but what he decided to do is to use it as a petrol vehicle during the summer while we wait until his build slot arrives so it's a standard two-door saloon we chose this one because it's really solid underneath and hasn't been messed about with there's not loads of welding and everything like that needs a bit of paintwork <coughs> needs the interior sorting out but all of those things we've got in hand and we've got a plan for the customers actually decided to go for the wonderful upgraded seats from Newton Commercial. I'm hoping you can hear me above the noise of this engine. I'm used to driving electric ones of these, not petrol ones. So excuse my jerkiness. Oh, I'm going to go through. I'm going to be doing too much. I'm going just about to get into a 30 limit, and I was doing 40. There we go. I think 40 mile an hour in fourth and pulling like a train. Yeah, so the interior is going to get upgraded, new carpets, new door cards, <coughs> excuse me, new rear seat cover. The underside, there's a couple of little patches that may need just tidying up, very minor stuff. And then we're going to do all of the bodywork on it as well, so it's going to get a full restoration. We've already checked it over so that make sure that it's okay to use for the summer. And then we'll be getting it all ready for the customer to collect it. In fact, he's going to collect it in a couple of days' time. So yeah, we've done that. The gearbox was really leaky, so we've changed the gearbox oil seals under the stop, the oil leaking everywhere. When we do the conversion, we keep everything from the gearbox back over standard. So it's good to use it and test it and make sure that everything's okay on the car. That's a bit better. I forgot that I had the choke on it. It was a little bit running a little bit fast there, so let's take the choke off and see what she's like. Yeah, nice and responsive. Still a little bit cold, a little bit chuggy. All gear, gear changes, which we'll get rid of when it becomes electric. All of that goes away, and it's all one nice smooth movement. Oh, the heat is on. How do I turn that off? It's on off. Forget with these petrol cars, the heat is on all the time. You just have to close the flap to stop it from actually putting heat into the cabin. Oh, they're a, they're a funny little thing to drive when they're, when they're a petrol. I tell you what, it's, I'm so used to driving them when they're converted to electric. It's like chalk and cheese. It's a completely different car when it's electric. It's so smooth and peppy and nippy really a joy to drive whereas this is interesting it's got lots of character <laughs> shall we say but there's lots of definitely lots of jerkiness and you're having to work a lot and really focus on what you're doing to make sure that it actually works okay do some exterior shots when we get back to the workshop just so you can see around it and I can show you why we're, we've decided to paint the car and then in a few months time once it's been restored and converted we'll be able to compare and contrast the before and after. Let's get some fresh air in the car eh? There we go. She's ticking over. Find the gear. There we are. I like driving in my car, it's not quite a Jaguar, no but it's a Morris Minor, which is equally as good. Actually that's one of the funny things when you're working on the cars that we do, we've worked recently on Morris Miners, a Jaguar S-Type from the 60s and also a DB6 and when they're all stripped down to the bare shell, when the I haven't got many components in them in the interior and they're all very similar, very same kind of construction. I'm driving along there in first without changing gear because I'm just so used to pressing the accelerator and the car actually just driving along. It's funny how you get used to driving electric instead of 
driving petrol and you forget to do stuff, I'll probably stall this on the way back again. It does make you smile, a little farty exhaust noise. It's got a certain smile value to it. Oh, we've got a bit of negotiating to do here past the bus. There we go, we're in second, we've got loads of power. It's one of the other things, the car actually becomes more powerful. 108 brake horsepower the, the motor's capable of, whereas I think in this standard form it'd be lucky to be punching above 50. So we actually have to turn down the power and the torque in the, the electric motor that we put in, otherwise it would harm the gearbox and probably be bend the half shafts and cause all kinds of mischief. But it gives scope for the owner with just adjusting the settings with the laptop to be able to have more power if they wanted to in the future if they upgraded the gearbox or if they even wanted to we do now have the option we haven't done it in a Morris Minor yet of being able to get rid of the gearbox and just have a reduction box the same as modern EVs do we've sourced one of those and in fact the upcoming Aston Martin DB6 build that we're doing that has a reduction gearbox in it instead of using the original gearbox. So things progress all the time. The conversion industry comes out with more and more equipment and products and things get better and we develop more stuff so at the moment we're developing charge controllers that will allow us to mix type 1 and type 2 charging abilities and also heater controls for the electric PTC heaters that we're starting to use, the water-based ones. We've been using air-based PTC heaters for quite a while now and now we're switching to water-based ones just because when you actually heat water up it's like a battery, it keeps the heat in it. You don't have to heat it as much as you do air. So lots of progression things on all of the builds that we do and more and more things becoming available in the marketplace for conversions as well. Uh, everyone has its own unique challenges and character. And I think they're all great. They're, 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 we've done over 10 conversions now. And I, I like the thing that we focus on quantity, sorry, not quantity, quality instead of quantity. Is that our main focus? Oh, coming around the corner a bit too fast. In third, we're all right. Oh, see, I don't even notice that corner when, when they're electric. It's just everything so straightforward but then I had to downshift to third make sure I was go going at the right I was just so involved in driving when they're petrol you don't get to really enjoy the drive whereas when they're electric it is it's pure you're with the car you can feel it you can hear all of its squeaks it's got all of its character still it just hasn't got this but let's fit frankly polluting engine and complicated driving procedure. Yeah, enough of a rant. Let's have a let's have a look around the the outside of this car. Now oh, the old dad reverse. Left arm over the passenger seat. That's all you need. I'll leave her out in the sun so we can have a walk around her. There we go. Let's leave her there. So as you can see, there's a little bit of rust on the wing there. The wing itself, not too bad, but internally is a little bit corroded. We've got a bit of marks there and we're getting some blibbing through the paint there. And we've got some marks on the door. Rubbers at Paris, replace them. A little bit of of corrosion in the swears line there. Ray lights a little bit corroded. Again, it's the same thing around this side. This is doors the worst, so the plot wasn't in there, so we'll, we'll sort the door out. It's got a little bit of a bend in this plate, and then the, this passenger side wing is the worst. So that's where we going to have new wing and while we're putting the wing on this side of putting the wing on the other side as well on the bonnet it has been polished through the lacquer and in fact the camera's picking that out very well it's the sun yeah, then we go it's a bit better see that lacquer there it's got a mark on the roof as well if i remember rightly yeah, there it is over the other side 
just where it's obviously had bird poop on the roof and hasn't been cleaned off in time and that's really eaten into the paint. Again, I don't know if it can pick, the camera picks that up very well, but it is fairly corroded in then. Then kind of sort of just fill of the speed used and go just cracking a little bit. I'll have a look in the boot. So boot there is quite good, but it's had under seal. It's solid, but it's had under seal and that's all cracking. So we'll take care of that. Other than that, kind of edges on the boot lid and just the seal on the wings, just not sitting in a, quite the right place. Um, and then when you open the doors, it's a little bit corroded around the, the door openings as well. Again, we'll tidy that up and get that painted. Let's go in and get the bonnet release. There we go. And then, if I remember how to do this with one hand. Oh, wow. Well, but you can tell I've opened plenty of Morris Minor bonnets, can't you? Just really a, a solid, but a bit shabby under here. That's probably the worst area on it. It's, like I say, a bit untidy, but then we'll be stripping all of this out to put the electric motor in. So at the same time, we will then get the engine bay tidied up and repainted as well. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to comment below if you've got any questions or if you've got any comments. If you want to see more videos like this, then please subscribe to our YouTube channel and get notifications. It's completely free of charge and it really helps us spread the word and get more people seeing these wonderful conversions and restorations that we're doing. Thanks for watching and keep charging ahead.